I, I, I think there's something incredible about just how pristine this place is. You know, we could just as easily, where we're standing now, this could be a thousand years ago. We're seeing land that very definitely no human has ever set foot on in places. It's just timeless. It's the life, all right. Catch a fish, cut it, cook it, and you're fine. Yeah. I grew up doing it, you know. Growing up, I can't stay away from fishing. It's just. I mean, that that's all we have. I mean, that that's what we learned. Not learned, it's what put into us. Our parents put it into us. I mean, when you're born and raised like that, you know, it's hard to get away from that, that thing. Without fishing, there's really no reason for Caltech to exist. Commercial fishing was always uh, the chance for people to make, they don't make much, but you know, they live on eight, ten thousand dollars a year, which is, with subsistence, is enough. It seemed like there was enough for everybody. And my parents used to talk about times when they could, you know, fish from beginning, when the fish were here to the end and their wheels would be overflowing in hours and not instead of days. Phoebe Gertrude. Oh, oh, two at a time. Three. That's, 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 that's what you got to do. We need a pack of dad. One just shot through it earlier. Just went on this shot. Part of the big issue on this river has been the federal government has stepped in and they really, in essence, have reallocated some of the salmon resources from this river back out into the Bering Sea Pollock fishery. And for those folks that don't know what Pollock is, you go into any McDonald's restaurant, get a fish witch or a Burger King, that's where it comes from. This year there was such a small Chinook salmon run back that not only couldn't the commercial fishermen fish, but literally the people here that depend on these fish for their for their overwinter food needs, the trawlers actually got to fish and take those fish and the people here sat on the beach and got nothing for the winter. We can't even get king salmon to survive. We, my wife and I normally put up 120 kings, give or take. This year we've gotten 40. You know, you see like that smokehouse right there? Yeah. King salmon that used to be full, there's three tiers in there, one, three tiers full of, uh, full of eaten fish and strips. 
not one hanging there yet. And me, like myself, I, I always restrict myself to just what we can get, what we take care of, 100, 100 kings a season, you know. And that's, I ain't even got a one yet. Yeah, if we ain't got that crop of fish that we need to king salmon, in our freezers, it's gonna be a rough winter. Without, you know, doing without. You know, I've tried working construction for, well, all my life. And I tried not fishing, not hunting. You couldn't buy, you couldn't buy fish at all. You might have the money, but you're not gonna be able to buy it. I want my kids, my boy, to be like me, happy, and be a productive young man. And to preserve the way we live now is, is, is how we're going to make it on the village. Otherwise, we're going to have to end up moving to town, moving, leaving the village and moving to town. There's just no way that we could survive out here by order from Fairbank. Populations have actually gone down in Caltech. We're used to be uh, uh, 39 years ago. We were, I think, there was 240 people living in Caltech, and now, the last census, I think we're 189. Because uh, you know we're losing a lot of young families, especially young families with children. Um, they're all moving to, you know, the urban areas for uh, job opportunities. They, they could choose to leave or choose to stay, but what wasn't right was that the government was making a choice to not allow them access to this resource uh, that they had had for centuries. Yukon River Drainage had a study done one time, and, and some of the villages, they're 70 percent unemployment. I mean, you hear about it, national unemployment is terrible, it's 8 percent, try 70 percent. In the last hundred years, there was a new fishery started that also started incidentally harvesting the resources coming back to these villages. The biggest harvester of those is, is the uh, trawl fishery in the Bering Sea, which is primarily Pollock. It feeds the fish stick market, fish witches at McDonald's, the Burger Kings, and things like that. It became a very popular food item, and, and because they were harvesting a million tons of it, it was a huge money item. You know, I went to a, a North Pacific Fisheries Management Council, and at that time, it, I think it was three billion dollar industry, the Pollock fishery, Pollock fishery, and that was a year after my best friend committed suicide. And uh, I told him that's blood money for me because that the eleven suicides happened, and it was just and I went to that meeting and it. They can have their three billion dollars, but it's blood money for me. We tried to get a count on what Yukon River salmon they intercepted. They said, well, we don't count it measured in metric tons. And it's thrown overboard. And then last year's bycatch of 120,000, 120,000 kings, bycatch, 126,000. That 126,000, that's enough to feed the whole Yukon, subsistence-wise. But it's caught in the bycatch, bycatch, it's a bycatch. The real story of all this is these communities can do better than what they're doing, but without local, local resources, they're going to become extinct. It's just that simple. Like I said, the government has mismanaged, uh, I don't want to say corruption, but they don't listen to some guy that makes $10,000 a year. Now, that may be what he feeds his family on. That may be, but 
you want a voice, get a trawler. You've got a few million dollars to spend. You go down to Juno and buddy buddy with the boys and you get the regulations. And that's the way it just the way it works out. sense of hopelessness, you know, that because we don't have anything here, what I'm going to do with my life, those kind of questions always linger in the back of your mind. Then all of a sudden, uh, alcohol and drugs become a factor, then there's that whole big cycle. The reason, one of the reasons our suicide rate is so high is people have nothing to look forward to anymore. That's a, that's a tough one. It's a tough one. You can feel it here when it happens. So. The suicide rate out here uh, is, is well documented. It's been going on for increasing for 20, 15 to 20 years. And uh, a lot of times it's young men who we were struggling to find their identity uh, in a changing world. You know, back uh, a long time ago, you know, the men were, their abilities to provide food for the family was the main thing, and they were good at it. Uh, a big part of their life was to go out and get the fish. If you can't do that, then uh, your, your pride in yourself and your self-esteem suffers as a result of that. You know, when uh, it was, oh, it must have been 20 years ago now, we had a, uh, what was considered a Trump crash. Just by coincidence, they happened to harvest hundreds of thousands of chum in the Bering Sea trawl fishery, but it was considered a chum crash, and we weren't commercial fishing anymore. That next winter, in this area, there were 11 suicides. There was no work. People didn't have any money. You know, where do you go? And that's in a town, you know, a village of 179 people. You know, that's, you know, you take a, you know, a city the size of Houston or something that, you know, we're talking about literally thousands of young, very young men committing suicide on an annual basis and that, that would shock the conscience. But because this is so remote, it just kind of gets um, ignored. We'll never know why. <laughs> I I I learn I learn that you ask the question why why they did it why what's their thought there could be there could be many many answers and then you start asking yourself why they do it we'll never know because it's their decision you know we we'll never know why. They're killing rural Alaska. They're definitely killing off the natives. It, it equates about to the same as when the government sponsored buffalo kills in the lower 48. It's uh, genocide. If you eliminate the reason for the native people, the fish in this area were the reason for the native people to live here. You eliminate the fish, you eliminate the native culture.
Too many people don't stop to listen. We're privileged. It's hard. It's very hard here. But, but beautiful.